Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the workshop. Today we're going to be taking apart this car shaped object and uh, making it a bit more of a car yeah. rather than just a car shaped object. Yeah, doing some front. Now we've, yeah. done, we know we've done the back, we need we're, to do some front. We need some front chassis because as many of you have pointed out, it looks like a rickshaw under there. The reason it looks like a rickshaw is because we had to get all our back ends in, because you can't do things like Ackerman and stuff like that without knowing your wheelbase and your track widths, because you need all those numbers to do your math. So now we've got those numbers, we need we do these, these numbers. numbers, and then we can have something that's like a go-kart, yeah. and then you can push me around garden while I go, bam, bam. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Right, come on. <laughs> All right, let's get stuck in. Remove the pegs, sir. Yep. Oh no, I don't do reverse well. I'm wearing clogs. idea with it now where are we going it's a good job it's a cam tail No. It's shocking last week when we were moving this thing around like a rickshaw how much weight there is on the front of the car so it's not it's obviously even though we have a transverse engine and it is right in front of the back wheels it's not actually behind the back wheels it's very much mid-engine so if you just lift the front end up a tiny bit it's really quite a lot of weight on the front wheels. It's quite surprising how well balanced this thing is already. And of course, we've got no fuel tank, we've got no radiator, no screen wash bottle, no battery, no brake reservoirs, like none of that stuff in the front yet. It's just an engine in the back. But it shows how much all of this weight is actually shared with the front wheels, which is rather cool. That's exactly what we we're hoping for. And um, we had to lift it, we had to pick it up quite a, a long way, which obviously moves the, the balance back and allows us to actually pick it up with ease because it was a bit uh, a bit tough. And that's why on that first video when we put it on its wheels, I was struggling a bit because it's light, but it's still not that light. <laughs> it's really funny when you talk about cars, people are like, oh. But it's a 600 kilo car, will it not be too light? And I'm like, well, think of the other things that weigh 600 kilos, things like, you know, a baby rhinoceros and a cow. <laughs> You've never looked at a baby rhino and gone, a bit like that, might blow away in a strong wind. <laughs> So just have it like that, and then it's... Hey! And here are some lower chassis legs I made earlier. They're not finished notched, they're just kind of almost there. Because I couldn't finish until I'd... Uh, and we've got the back end in. I know the car looks a little bit different than it did a moment ago, but that's because yesterday we turned the cameras off and just measured and did maths all afternoon. And we did that to make sure that the car is as the plans are and to make sure that we can still get spanners on things and stuff like that, make sure nothing's kind of in the way and just quadruple check everything because paper's easy, but 
you can always miss something. So to, we mocked it all up, checked it all, it's all bang on. Now then, the thing that we needed to get in was our track width. Your track width is the center point to center point of one axle. And then so you got a rear track width and a front track width. So center point to center point. Most cars now are narrower at the front. That causes them to understeer, so the front end slides. So in the event of overdriving the car, the car would plow straight, which is nice and safe, rather than spinning backwards and doing the old school Porsche 911 thing. It won't pirouette down the road, it will just go straight. So that's 99% of cars. Is that what we want? Well, are there some cars that have a wider front track width than the rear? Yeah, there are. My 2CV has a wider front track width than the rear. Uh, a lot of Group B rally cars have a wider front track width at the front than the rear. This is because full drive cars are fundamentally front wheel drive. They handle like front wheel drive cars. Anytime you are putting drive to the front of a car, unless you have a really clever four wheel drive system that can shift power around, you're driving a front wheel drive car and all all-wheel drive cars are front-wheel drive until they're not, until they shove a bit of power to the back, but they're still front-wheel drive fundamentally. We have a tendency to understeer. Uh, drift cars are also usually wider at the front than they are at the rear. That's because they want really good command and control of that front end in order to keep that back end sliding and do transitions. So they can slide it one way and then they can transition to sliding it the other way without having understeer which would obviously cause the front to slide straight which isn't what they want so what do we want that's a very difficult question and it's a question that took me a long time to answer but the answer to that is absolutely square so we are the same width at the back than we are at the front kind of because the front has a little bit more camber so as we add camber to the front, it moves the center line at the bottom of the tire out, which makes your car wider at the front than it is at the back. So we have to make sure that with our camber, we are still square. There's one other car that's square, well, two technically, of the cars that are square. And those are the Peugeot 205 T16. the 405 T16. The Peugeot 205 T16 was a Group B rally car. It was a little teeny tiny, very, very wide Peugeot. Um, we are a little teeny tiny, short wheelbase, very wide Mosquito. And for the same reasons as the 205, by the way, Ari Vatanen, legendary rally driver, doesn't get anywhere near the credit he deserves. People go on and on and on about Audi Quattro's, nowhere near as good as the Peugeot T16. Like nowhere near, but it's super long way. Audi Quattro's big oversteer heavy thing. T16 just lovely, absolutely wonderful. That's why the T16 beat it and was better. And Peugeot were in development of the 405 T16, which was going to be a Group S rally car. The Group S rally cars were going to replace Group B and be better and safer and all that before it all got banned. And when it all got banned, Peugeot was stuck with a lot of cars that they didn't know what to do with. So they took them to the Paris Dakar and they took them to Pikes Peak Hill Climb. And that's where the Americans watching this video know the Peugeot from because it actually got the record at, uh, at Pikes Peak. <laughs> And for the same reasons as the Peugeot we want, square at the front, square at the rear. 260, 270 brake horsepower with a 620 kilo maximum weight is scary. Having a car with such a short wheelbase is scary. And so we've gone to every single length we possibly can to make this car as predictable handling as possible. That's why we haven't used trailing arms like so many other people do. That's why we've taken so, like, so much time and put so much effort into developing such a stiff chassis. And the back end of this car doesn't have an anti-roll bar because it's driven off the front. So the front end needs to be super stable in order to keep the body flat through corners. The idea of this car is not to have 
all of the horsepower in the world over it will it'll fly with that en with that much power and that much engine in it but it's to actually carry speed through corners mid corner speed will gain you more time around a track or more time on a road than having all of the power will because there comes a level of power where you can't actually use it's called road speed um where you can't actually use the power that you've got. They found this way back in the day with the Targa Florio, when they did the, the Targa Florio uh, in southern Italy, in Sicily. And they found that the sports cars were going as fast as like the big Le Mans prototype cars. And they couldn't actually, no matter how much the GT40s and the big Porsche 917s, no matter how much power they had, they couldn't go faster than the sports cars you know, the 911s and the Stratoses and all of that. And the reason is because there was a standard, like there was a maximum speed as fast as you could go around that road. And the big prototypes didn't have the space to use the power that they had. Motorcyclists found this out years ago with the Suzuki uh, GSXRs. The GSXR 600 in many cases was as fast down an actual road, not on a racing track, but down an actual road, the GSXR 600 was as fast or faster than a GSXR 1000 because you could actually couldn't get up into the power and the ability to carry speed through a corner and have a predictable handling vehicle is vital and it actually makes for a faster car than having all the power in the world. Power's clickbaity and it works and it gets views, but chassis is what keeps you safe and it's what makes your car fast. Now, We've done everything we can to make sure this car handles as well as it possibly can and is as predictable as it possibly can. Even to the fact where, and this is super geeky and it's one of those little things, but the pivot that at the bottom of the suspension arm at the front runs all the way through to that pivot in line with the rear pivot on that corner and then to that wheel pivot there. So this line is perf this corner is perfectly in line with that corner. So that when this suspension compresses, it puts weight on that back tire. Because we don't have a differential. And we don't need a differential because we've got so much grip. We don't need a rear anti-roll bar because the front of this car will drive the rear. And this entire car will squat down vertically and give us a ton of mechanical grip. And under about 120 miles an hour, aero grip means nothing, and it's all about mechanical grip. That leads me to another thing. Previously, and the reason the uh, heater is in, previously I made a video called the Mura problem. Now the Mura suffered from a very light front end and very scary handling in some circumstances and uh, really undesirable handling. And so I made a study of the Mura, and then I explained the differences between this car and how I'm going to uh, stop or prevent the mirror problem in this car and I made a video all about it called the mirror problem there'll be a link to that video at the end of this one so if you're looking at this and you think that this car will be bum heavy or back end heavy and that the front end will be too light don't worry you can watch that video and in that video I'll explain it all to you but the reason that why the heater is in is because I still remeasured all the packaging because I would all I would rather now measure it four ways from Sunday, then later it'd be wrong.
And somebody will mention the words Ackerman in the comments, because they always do. <laughs> right. You can't do your Ackerman until you have your both track widths and your wheelbase solid, sorted, done. In the Pandora, in the, in the, the I nearly said it then, in the mirror problem video, I mention the front end and how we're laying everything out. And I mention that we've left loads of space to move the steering rack forwards, backwards, up, down, left, right. It will be going downwards in that way. But, because we know, but we've left loads of room for adjustment to get it right. Because we know. Everybody does it the back arse, arse backwards as well. Everybody keeps the steering rack where, it's, where it is and adds spaces to here. And je test, right? We're not going to do that. We're going to move the rack instead because we have room to do it because we are not working with someone else's chassis. So we are not inheriting someone else's problems. Shout out in the comments if you've got terrible, terrible hay fever. Because they make me drowsy and a bit like, dopey, I don't like taking antihistamines. So I'm trying not to. And so I'm on like all of the herbal ones and uh, trying to be on all the herbal ones. And I think every single herbal like remedy for, um, <laughs> for hay fever has a stimulant in it. I feel like I've had about 17 cups of coffee. I'm like vibrating. I'm like that episode of uh, Future Armor where Fry drinks all the coffee and he can see through time. <laughs> so we've just been doing some calculations and a standard mini sports pack, which is the, the mini my mum used to have, yeah? Yep. Uh, it's the 1275 fuel injected one. So it, it's not the new Mini, it's the classic Mini, but it's the last of the classic Mini, the quickest one that you could buy, the one with 13 inch wheels. Uh, looked up the fuel economy for that, and apparently you're lucky if you get about 30. On, uh, right? Tiny, tiny wheels, not a very aerodynamic car, uh, four speed gearbox, you know, a lot of RPM on the motorway, all that kind of thing. Then I looked up the fuel economy for a Civic Type R, and a Civic Type R gets about 35 to the gallon, which is shocking. Yeah. But two cars made three years apart. Okay, the Mini's really from the 70s, but... It's an old A series, it's been yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's 50, the A series goes back to 50, but the 1275 is a 70s engine reel, isn't it? Um, but two cars made three years apart, One's two litre and one's a 1 1.2 and a half, really. And, <laughs> and the two litres are getting better fuel economy. Anyway, right. And the Civic has a 50 litre fuel tank. Now, a GTM fuel tank is 38.4 38. 38. or something litres. And, and really, we want the same as a Civic or more. Yeah. A Civ I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get a Put a six to a litre fuel tank in there. Yeah. No problem. And a, a Civic on, on its 50 litres of fuel gets about 300 miles of range. Now, we think we'll be able to get 50 miles to the gallon as a, you keep it as a ballpark estimate. Because 
I can drive around all day under 4,000 RPM in this, even on the motorway, because it's got six gears and it's super slippery, or it will be when we finish with it. It's got a very small frontal area, and what a lot of people don't work out when they look at aerodynamics is that your drag coefficient is times by your frontal area. Yeah. And that's why motorbikes, even though they've got a tiny frontal area, have a terrible drag coefficient, because people are terrible in aerodynamics. That's, that's why people aren't fish. That's, that's, why, that's why fairies are invented. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, what we reckon is if we have a 60 litre fuel tank and we get 50 miles to the gallon, yep. that's 660 miles yeah. to a tank full. 659.9 something, isn't it? Yeah. Miles to a tank of fuel. Which is not bad. That's like that's like Jag numbers. That's proper Grand Tourer. Yeah. And of course, GTM originally stands for Grand Touring Mini. So you can't exactly have a fuel tank the size of a sippy cup, can you? No, no there's no point. If you're on a, if you're on a long trip, the way to to get, make good time is to not having to keep stopping for fuel. Because if you if you're doing the speed limit all the way there, and you can go all the way yeah. there at the speed limit, but if you're in, in something that does like 20 to a gallon or 15 to what a gallon. What you don't want is range anxiety. Yeah. Like electric car people. Well, it's, not, it's not just that. It's, it's, if you stop for fuel, it, it takes you 10, 15 well, minutes. More than that, because you, there's, always a, there's always a queue at the fuel pump and, you know. You've lost 10 or 15 yeah. minutes where if you can drive all the way there. And when you, do, when you do stop, you want to have a proper rest as well. Yeah. When you, you don't want to be stopping for 10 minutes at a time because you don't rest then. When you want to stop, you want to be stopping for like lunch and to have lunch and have a walk around and have a rest proper, don't you? Yeah. And then get back in your car and drive. Whereas if you keep having to stop for fuel, you end up having well, to you push yourself stop, harder. Yeah, you feel like you can't stop. Yeah. Uh, you keep having to push yourself harder in order to, to make the time, and I don't want that. So we want really good fuel economy, and we want really good range, because it's not a Grand Touring Mini without it. Oh. So an out of VTEC, it'll be super. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, and also this Skunk 2 cam, it's supposed to have more torque out of VTEC than a standard cam. So Even better. And um, this these two... I don't want to call them chassis rails, but chassis rails, <laughs> <laughs> they are wider apart than, a good 10 litres wider apart than the original GTM mini, sub mini front subframe. And we have room backwards as well, and we have room above. And we can either put the spare tyre in front of the fuel tank or on top. And there's a bunch of things that, until we get, I don't want to situate until we've got the car on corner balancing scales. There's a bunch of things that you can move around in order to get your weighting perfect yeah. before you start messing around. You've got your battery, you've got your screen wash bottle, and you've got your spare tire, basically, and, and a couple of other things. And the, like a screen wash bottle doesn't seem like much, but if your screen wash bottle holds a litre, that's a kilo. You know, and, and your battery is... Like even a lithium battery is two kilos. You know, your spare tire is nine kilos, which doesn't seem like, oh, nine and a half kilos, this, this little space saver. And so that might not seem like a lot. But the difference between putting it here and putting it on top flat like this, right, is the difference between having that nine kilos over the center line of the front wheel, so putting a proportion of its weight in the middle of the car, or having all of its weight in front of the car. And the more weight that you have in front of or behind an axle, because we aren't having anything behind the back axle other than the exhaust, are we? And lights and a number plate. But, I'm running out of air. <laughs> you can tell I've uh, got allergies this morning but if we put it in front then all of the weight is on a lever from the centre point of the wheel forward yeah, so that 9 kilos becomes so that 9 kilos becomes the equivalent kilos, of yeah 14 kilos plus and we can actually work that out mathematically and help us to weight balance the car accordingly and so we're not adding weight we're just moving weight around in order to get the weight balance correct 
which is ideal. What were we talking about? Anyway, let's make a chassis. <laughs> This is why Dad is using the grinder this week, and I am not. <laughs> uh, I can't use I can't use any sort of like. It's real frustrating for me. I hate feeling groggy. This is one of those I, I like. I hate feeling groggy and weird, and I hate having allergies. But there's no way around it, and uh, that's why Dad's doing all the heavy lifting this week. That which is bad because I've had like a few weeks of being somewhat incapacitated either being really busy or not being well and i feel terrible having to rely on dad to do stuff it really it annoys me it irks me but like i'm just lucky to have him uh, yeah but if you're nursing us do this it's my not-so-patented technique of copying a notch from one side to the other. Um, and I've just knocked the microphone on my hand. But what you do is you wrap some stiff card around a notch, right? And then you run around it with a file. You tape, you tape it with masking tape, wrap it nice and tight, run around it with a file, and then to get the absolute opposite or mirror image of that notch on the other side, what you do is you unwrap it and then you wrap it in reverse so your outside then becomes your inside and you wrap it round again and then you get a line. When, the way we designed this is to have nothing in bending, so the, the roll cage isn't space frame, but we've tried to, obviously that's roll cage, which is unspace frameable almost, but we've tried to make it stick to the same rules as space frames on the front and rear, not have tubes in bending. So uh, in bending means when you have a T-piece, when you have a, a, a straight tube, and then a tube to the like to that tube. So like, if this wasn't going to have a bracket on it and, and have a suspension arm on it, that straight T piece there, if you had pressure going this way, that would be in bending. But because of the way that this is going to go into a suspension mount like that, and there's going to be a suspension mount there, and there's going to be a, a thing here, all of that's then tied together, that's not in bending. Because you've got to bend well, here. A, a turret for the, for the top, yeah. all linked in together. So I did not explain that properly, right? And uh, and then you've got a bend here, so that has to have a tube that runs to that bend. Here, you have a bend. So this runs up here, and it has a bend, and so that runs to the to that bend. And of course, it has the knee bar, which is straight. So this bend and this bend are tied in together that way. This bottom tube goes over the top of the uh, lower arm. But even that's not in bending because you have, of course, the footwell here. So you have the footwell running to the and the floor, running to the inside of the bend. So even that's not in bending. And so everything is pretty much tied in together, making everything stronger. This is a bend, but that has a tube in the middle of it. So even that's not in bending. So you have to try and tie everything to everything else, which is what makes it integrated. And of course, means that we don't have to have a chassis because our roll cage is our chassis. After... What have we lost? Oh, that tube on there. Silly. <sighs> Once I'm in, I'll take my shoes off. You're as bad as a sure feet guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
it feels amazing to sit in here and see the beginnings of a footwell. It's, it's awesome. It always feels really nice to sit in this car. And uh, I don't know why that is, but it, it just, it's a nice place to be, which is bizarre. Because it, it's, there's not a lot of it. <laughs> but it, it just feels lovely. And um, someone's going to ask down in the comments, so I'll tell you now. We're going to be using four hinge pedals because of the angle of my leg. This was always the plan. I mentioned it a long time ago in a video. Um, it might have been the Mura video, in fact, the Mura problems video. But uh, we're going to be using four hinge pedals because the angle of my leg. It's just a, a more natural feeling position. And yeah. I'm really, really happy. So thank you all for watching. Tell me what you think down in the comments below of uh, of what we're doing. It's I'm really happy anyway, even for the people who don't like it. But um, I know there's a lot of you that are massively supportive and all that, and that's that's a huge drive every single week, especially when I'm not well like I'm this week. Like your comments have really helped and uh, are really inspiring and motivating and stuff. So thank you all for that. And thank you for subscribing and clicking the bell icon and all that. It really helps my channel grow. Um, you know, we're only a little channel and we're a little community and I'm really lucky and I'm really fortunate that we have such a, a nice and helpful and lovely community. And there's all of my social media down in the uh, down in the description, so if you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Instagram's been blowing up lately. I don't know what, what that's about, but Instagram's been doing amazing. So thank you all for uh, following us on Instagram and stuff. And uh, please be awesome to each other. There's two buttons. One is my this channel that you're watching now, and the other one is my partner's NIS channel, Merriam and uh, Oliver. And there's two videos. One is a full playlist of this car, so if you want to watch these videos and start from the very beginning from when this was naught but a crashed and rusty husk you can do and the other one will be mirror problem uh, the mirror problem because that fits along with this video so thank you all for watching please be awesome to each other and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye One more, come back father, because that was weird. Come with some energy. Uh, pardon me? Different sort of energy. Uh, I said a different sort of energy. <laughs>